Okay, we're getting ready to uh, go on our maiden voyage. We've had this camper, I don't know, almost a week now. It's taken us a long time to get everything set up. So uh, I was kind of surprised there's a lot of things that you have to get for these campers that don't just come with it. So I'm going to go through a few of those those things that, that don't come with the camper that you have to have. And then I'm also going to go through a lot of things that we've added that not necessarily have to have, but we've added. And then some of the stories that we've done, uh, kind of preparing for our maiden voyage. Okay, now some of our storage, we've set it up. I think we did pretty good with some of our storage, but it may be different for everybody else. But I'm just going to do a quick thing about what we've added for our storage and some of the things we've added. First compartment here, like I say, we have the, the uh, 19FD, so it has a lot of outdoor storage. One thing that we had to add is we had to add a water jug and that's the reason why a water jug comes in handy is if you're at a campsite and you, you don't have a way of getting a water hose um, over to your camper if you want to go over and pick up get up some get some water and fill it up you and put it in your fresh water tank you'll need one of these another reason we did that is that we you don't know how much water you put in there we're going to try to keep our weight low so by, we know this is a six gallon tank so if we put that whole thing in there that's six gallons so like i say you have to do that weight thing if that's something that you're worried about so in our case we, we, we're going to leave the house with about four gallons so we filled this up already and already filled up our tank with about four gallons of water in our fresh water tank just in case we have to use the toilet when we're on the way to our first camping trip another thing we use the storage for is just some this one here is just used we've got some rugs that we use outdoor outdoor rugs and that's about all we've got on that one the next storage bin we have is the one we have underneath of our couch and uh, what we've done with this side here is I've actually taken the the grill and I put it in one of these bins here that fits real nice inside of there obviously you don't want to put it in there when it's hot let it cool down and set it in there I've got my spatula here for it so that's pretty much this side here moving on back to the back take this compartment here and I've got one of my rugs here inside and I've got some outdoor stuff that we might need to use this is a light for outside on the table this is a picnic table tablecloth and I just added some stuff there like I say again that's gonna change throughout the years and different for different people but that's gonna what's what we're gonna do on this side because this is the side that we'd have the awning out picnic table over here on this side so figured that'll work out good for that one of the things that uh, we did do before we take it out for its maiden voyage is we tested everything out I know they test them out at the, at the company and we just wanted to check everything so what we first thing we did is we made sure we got underneath this thing here we got it one of the gas tanks turned on and we went and checked every one of the components and I'll go through that how we checked out each one of those when we get inside but we even went over here and fired up the grill we hooked it up here to the side of the rack and got it seasoned up and ready to go for our maiden, maiden voyage all right moving over on, on this side you'll notice that one thing I was really surprised doesn't have anything to level this with thought well surely there'll be a level on here somewhere but we had to go out and purchase a level you had to have a little level here I put it on these corners front and back side to side to give an idea of how level the camper is you can eyeball it a little bit but it's best to have that you got to have a pretty good level for your refrigerator and also this unit has the downspout little gutters here and you want them you want to decide if they want that if it does rain if it's going to come out the front or the back depending on if you want to put a slant to the back or toward the front okay moving around to the side again on this is the other side this front compartment here is mainly all of our hookups set up as far as we've got levelers i've got a drill in here with the right size chuck in here to put the the uh, stabilizers on i've got some chalks I have a special handle for my for my um, weight distribution hitch and I've got a pad here knee pad so if you have to get underneath the camp for any reason you have that so that's what's in that bin there and we'll just keep on moving around to, again this is that other side of that couch 
storage here and we have another bin here and this has what does this have in it yeah this has our water hose in that because what happens is you have a water hose you take it from your campsite it's full of water you're never going to get all that water out of there you don't want that draining you want to put that somewhere you can maybe throw it in the back of your bed of your truck but in our case we're going to use this here we'll try this out that way if it has any water it's going to go inside that bin and we won't have to worry about it getting inside okay the next thing this is something we didn't think about but it has a nice little holder down here for a, a sewer pipe well i thought the sewer pipe came with it but it doesn't so that's about a anywhere from a 30 to 40 dollar purchase i've got a 15 foot hose on mine i went ahead and bought that like i say if you don't have that and you get to campsite and you've got all this gray, gray water and your black water you're gonna have a hard time dumping that so make sure you have that hose for your first maiden voyage if you plan on using that stuff so we're ready for that and uh that's pretty much all the storage on the outside and we'll go inside and we'll show you what we've done on the inside uh, now going inside we didn't there's these things here you don't have to have for your maiden voyage but we went ahead and added a few things just to be comfy for the first time out if you notice we put a little uh set up here and we put some shoes in that we had to get one and then cut it at the bottom because it made it a little shorter uh we've kind of customized it a little bit we've added our own curtains using uh tension rods on the inside of these we've got curtains on the inside of there that one here because it's small we've just gone with the one curtain <clears throat> we've also added hooks you always have things you need to hang up and we just wanted to have things kind of ready so we had added a hook here we have a flashlight that if you need to go out at night we have a dog that we have to take out at night so we have a flashlight by that door and then we usually hang up the, the camper key on one of these and maybe the car key on the other so that's something we just thought about putting in <clears throat> okay as far as <clears throat> our stuff inside of here on the this is the Murphy bed when it's folded down we did change out our mattress and I'm not going to get into that a whole much we just we just first thing we did was change that into a a uh a uh, memory foam type mattress we just weren't going to even try to deal with the mattress that came with this so we changed that out and we'll get into a lot of our next video where we actually show the camper when it's all set up we'll we'll get into the what we've done with the bed and everything but uh, we did add some stuff over here on this side this is this is normally a two plug we added a, a surge protected six plug and it also has three usbs because if you have two of you with phones you have USBs on this side, but you don't have any on this side. Now this will only run on the 110 power. I believe these over here will actually run off the 12 volt, but I'm not sure about that yet. So we've done that. We've added some baskets to put our stuff in there. We bought some special lamps that go on the, these are battery powered. They go on the side here. We're gonna use those on our nightstand because they're short. Well, Figures they won't work for us the first time up, but there you go. And those change three different shades, and they'll also go to different colors. So we decided to go ahead and get one of those for each side. And uh, one of the uh, members in the Facebook group got these wedges. Uh, we really like the way they are set up. It's just a plain wedge set up here. Kind of pricey. But they're memory foam and the nice thing about those is they work behind the couch here to fill that groove in when your bed's down they'll work on the end keep stuff from falling behind and we'll show you again on our next video how those work out of course we've customized as far as we've got little pillows and we've got our water, water hog mat, mat here which is really neat because it holds it can hold up to a gallon of water so that if you have a rainy day this is a perfect thing to use there We've also added a, a lot of stuff here. We've added uh, two hooks here on this side and two hooks on the bathroom side. Probably hang towels on that as we use them. Underneath the dinette and had a two plug over here. We've also got that same setup where this 
goes from a two plug to a six plug surge protected and it actually has two USB setups on there too so that works out good for grandchild and all their their gidget gadgets we'll move on into the bathroom now moving into the bathroom it did come with a, a towel rack and a toilet paper roller but it was going to require us to do some drilling back here and I actually put some kind of threads in here we didn't really want to do that we end up taking one that we had in our old A-liner we've got this set up here and it, it just matched a little bit better like I said for a toilet paper roller for there we've added a couple some shelving and stuff inside of the the big cabinet like I say we're not going to get into that because I'm sure it's going to change up quite a bit over the next couple of months as we figure out what really works for us we did add inside of this medicine cabinet we added these little con these containers here they fit really nice so we purchased walmart but that way you can have your stuff in there and it can slide back and forth and it doesn't really spill out or knock out it does have a nice ledge here but i think this is going to work out even nicer one thing that we had to add, it's another one of those things that you just think you, you don't think about it. The stove. Uh, our stove, I don't know if some of them do have automatic lighters, but ours doesn't. I mean, you turn on those gas gas burners and just gas starts pouring out of here. So we had to buy one of these little setups here to light, light our gas. And so that, that's something that you don't think about, but you get gold camping and you're going to have to find a way of a match or something to get your, your stove lit. So make sure you have one of those. Uh, as far as testing things out, we, we came in here, we, we ran off three of our burners to make sure they worked. We came in and we turned our refrigerator on. Basically it's got two setups here. And it's got the auto you got the on button and then you have the auto and then if you put it on just I think it's out is your gas setting so we just we checked it with the electric first to make sure it got cold and it got cold after about 10 or 15 minutes then we went ahead and put it to gas only we went ahead and set a timer for 45 minutes and we came back 45 minutes later and we made sure we heard that clicking noise when that when that burner kicks on and made sure that it was come it did come on and that it did get cold if it if this check light comes on then that's telling you it didn't light so that's something you want to check out check that out everything worked good on that again the stove we checked out and uh we checked out all of our water lines we we took our water heater did the same thing going back over here to the control panel you'll see the water water has set up several setups it has water heater gas water heater electric we checked it with the electric, everything worked out good. We turned that off and then we ran it out and we ran it with the gas and propane, made sure it, we could hear it click on and made sure that worked. We haven't really checked the pump too much, but our dealer, we were actually played with that when we were up at the dealer. He showed us how that worked. So I'm pre pretty good with that. We also took the awning we took it all the way out and brought it all the way in. That you have to work with a little bit because that it kind of binds up on you and it sticks a little bit so we had to be careful with that it was full of water so we let all that water dry off and that's something we'll have to do probably after every trip is let get some of that water out let it dry out really good so we we tried that out of course we ran our awning lights our porch light and uh kind of messed around with that a little bit worked out pretty good so that's something you want to check out and uh, we also ran our furnace. Took our furnace. We came in here one morning when it was a little cool. It was about 65 in here. And we went ahead and cranked that up until we until it kicked in. We could hear it kick in. Had the fan first. And then all of a sudden then you hear it failing. It gets some heat and it starts blowing some heat in here. So we wanted to check that out. And everything seemed to work out good with that. We have decided, like most other people, that we don't like this thermostat here. I've already ordered a little Honeywell. This one here, what the problem is, is it tells you what temperature it is in here with an old analog set up. Pretty hot in here right now, 85. But anyway, we uh, we would, this here is what we don't like because it just has a range as far as cooler to warmer. It doesn't actually have a physical temperature. 
So that honey well that we're going to get is going to have a temperature that's in the in the camper and then it also will have one you can set for that heater to kick on in a certain place. And uh, it'll be nice because it, one thing bad about it is it has a battery that you have to put in it and maintain that battery. But it's also nice because it'll have a digital display with the actual temperature. So that'll be nice. It's not as hard as people would think. I think there's only two wires you have to deal with. You take this apart, it's two wires that you have to hook to the terminals. Pretty easy to change out. We've also added a hook here. We're going to use that for our dog's leash. And uh, that's about, I think all here, I, I've got it right in, inside here. Like I say, I'm going to get out and I'll do a little summary on what we found for our first trip. One other thing that we found out is that although it, there is a spare tire that it comes with, there's no jack at all and there's no lug wrench like this. So unless you get lucky and it fits up to your car perfect, you want to at least get a lug wrench because that and make sure it fits the ones that you have. And what we're going to do, we have a scissors type jackets in our in our ridge line, and we'll end up using that if we have to for our jack at this point. Some people buy a bottle jack, and we may end up doing that too. We'll just have to see. But just know that you can't change that tire out on your own without AAA coming because you're not going to have a jack. To do that and you're not going to have a lug wrench nothing worse than having something to do and you don't have the tools to do it like I showed you earlier uh, one thing that you have to have or you would if you need water I showed you earlier where we actually that that water hose you've got to get that water hose it doesn't come with it you've got to buy one we bought a 50 footer uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be long enough we're gonna try that if you get a 100 footer or a 75, it just takes a lot of space up. So we're gonna try the 50 footer. If we find we need more, we'll end up buying another 50 footer. But make sure you get that because you're not gonna have any way of hooking up your water. You'll have to run strictly off your fresh water tank. So to sum this all up, there are some things that you have to purchase when you first go out for your first maiden voyage. And just don't think you buy this from the dealer and head out because you need to have a few things ready to go so you want to test a few things and have a few things ready to go so I gave you a list of what you can need you'll need and I'll also put that in the descriptions below below the video of some of the things I, I purchased now I've added a few other things when you also notice on the back of here and right here I've added up a, a, a rear view camera I've used that hookup that that comes with it uh, they say it's uh backup camera ready what that basically means is a wire hooked up there's a bunch of wire what happened in that case I got up in there and there's a lot of wire in there I mean there was there was probably enough to run all the way down the back so I had to take it and tuck it there's a big hole there I had to tuck it into the wall until I got that new setup on there and that's a Furion system it's a little more pricey but the nice thing is it's all set up for this this size camper so I've got that hooked up that what that does i was curious but some of them run different ways this one runs to your actual running lights which are these lights that run all the way around your camper and actually in your car you put it to that second position not your headlights but that next running light and by doing that that powers up that that system there so what will have to happen is what those running lights will have to run the whole time we're towing and we'll see how that works out i mean in my other camper i had a setup where I had a switch where I made it live all the time and then had a switch I can turn it off when I as needed. But we're going to try the running lights and see how well that works and go with that. You'll also look in the back here. I have a uh, Weeboo system right over here. You'll see an antenna. Now I haven't got it hooked up yet. I've just got the antenna there. We're going to test it out on this next trip just to see how well it works. We had purchased that before. Not got a lot of use out of it yet. I know where we're going it's kind of got a weak signal so that'd be a good place to test that once we get it tested and realize we really want that system running on here we'll all go ahead and we'll have to end up drilling a hole back here in the back to go through the into the bathroom and through the cabinet and then it'll go up, up, up toward the front and we'll have a place that mount our system inside of there so that'll be another project that we probably will we'll see that through but for now, we're looking forward to getting this thing on the road. It's kind of overcast today, but we're supposed to have some beautiful weather. It's supposed to be in the upper 70s. 
and it i think upper 50s at night it's going to be beautiful for camping especially for uh kentucky in middle of june it's not too bad we'll take it so uh our next video will be that maiden trip so i hope this one helped you out on what you can expect when you first get your camper and how to get it set up for its maiden voyage and then we'll see you again for the the first maiden voyage